Hey everybody, this is Brendan here. And today we're gonna, I'm actually gonna try and get through the rest of these elements. A lot of the rest of these are pretty easy. There's just not much to them. So first we're gonna start with interactive. Now you have the RSS feed. This is so you can update consistent feeds to your website. Um, to be honest, I really don't know a whole lot about RSS feeds. I was just kind of reading up on it a little bit ago. But it's so you can continuously update articles or um, and to subscribed users of your website. So say you enter Doctor. Now let's see. Title of the RC we'll go with test. And okay, just so we can get into here. Then you can start adding your articles. You know, you list the description of the article. Then you add the link to the article itself, wherever the article is going to be. And so then it actually you know does a display of you know you could have an RSS feed of your articles. Um, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about that, but that's something that is an option again on Open Elements. Now later on when I do. Uh, final tutorial with the elements I'm going to include a little bit more details um, and we're going to kind of I don't know if I went over but I think we're going to go over the more elements I'm going to kind of look through those we'll take a look at all those as well disable right click try this out and this could disable the right click inside your web page so that way right clicking will you could right click inside of here, but when you're in the actual web page, no. Yeah, you can't select the. Uh, it didn't disable it, did it? Maybe it's just because it's a preview and not actually on the internet, but it's supposed to disable the right click of the mouse is what it does. And there's really no options to it. Yeah, there's nothing to it. I mean, you don't, you just drag it and drop it in, so. But that's in case you don't want somebody to be able to right click and download a picture or something like that. Next is an external page iframe. What this is, is this will open up a random page. So let's go. It'll actually open up another web page. Inside of here. And so there's a few different settings that we're going to have to adjust. So go here to properties while selecting it first. Let's auto center that. So if we wanted to have a transparent background, if we want to scroll bars, it's automatically yes or no. Um, you could have a border to the whole website, but basically when you go in and preview, oops, sorry. Oh, come on. Refresh. Preview. See, it puts another website inside. So you could actually have, you know, and have it interactive too. So you go interactive inside of here inside of your own website that's another cool thing about it too all right let's delete that you know again um real simple real basic let me see any cloud nope nothing for the cloud just the basic properties so let's delete that image zoom that's so if somebody selects on an image Select that. 
title, zoom, link, nothing, complete, and save. So if you're inside of the internet and you click on this, it actually zooms in on the picture. Creates a whole separate window so you can zoom in and look at it at a full size, not the miniature size that it automatically comes on. That picture is actually just slightly scaled down from original. But um, let's just do this. Image. We'll select a larger one. Just like that. It opens up larger than what it is displayed. So that's a cool feature right there. You can set that up to all your different images and it sits up here at the top and just zooms the image that you have here. Since that was the only image, that's the only one that was I selected. PayPal, interactive. It's literally that. It's a PayPal button. You, when you go and you sign up for PayPal, you go to Merchant Services and click on Create Payment Button for your website. And it's going to, once it creates, you copy and paste the button code field. And so it's going to give you a button code. You copy and paste it just like we did on the media, um, daily motion, and uh, yeah, it's just like the daily motion. It's going to be a big old embedded code like that. So you enter that in, and then you got the PayPal button. Um, okay, I don't think. Yeah, it's you can't configure anything until you have it entered, and I don't have a PayPal account, so. Um, next, community social bar. This is if you can have Twitter, Twitter follow, you can choose the type of buttons that you want. You can have a Facebook subscribe. And see, all of this is in French. And so, let's see. So let's do all of those. Oh. Okay, so yeah, you do your URL to your like and share buttons, your plus one button for your Google. You can do it like that. And it actually places it out, you know, it'll line up a bar for you. So like if you were to have all of these, uh, I don't have any of that information. But another way, I wanted to show you real quick on the social media stuff is an image link. And you type in your URL to where the image link goes and under styles you can there's Twitter button, Facebook buttons. So you actually select that and have a Facebook button right there. And there's an image on mouse over as well as the main image. So I'd rather use these kind of buttons and I could move them around and place them throughout the page. You could also do the social media bar that it comes with. But I will be honest, with the more elements, there's a much better social media bars in there, in my personal opinion. You know, everybody has a different opinion on those. Next, statistics. If you have a uh, Google um, Analytics, then you, you, know, you go in, you sign up to the Google account, and you get the you do the whole form, and then you get the code. And what you do is you paste it in here, and then it sets up in your for your, the page, and it sits up here at the top. So that's how that works. Page hit counter again. Sets so in type since the beginning, daily, weekly, monthly, or annual. Since the beginning, you set initial value, go zero. 
initial value is zero. Number of digits to display. If you only want two digits on the bottom or if you want 20 digits on the bottom. And you can only count unique visitors. So that way only brand new visitors are counted. New IP addresses. Now if you do every one, then you could have one computer log on 100 times and it'll count 100 times. So I leave only unique. That way each computer logs on one time, it's counted that that person was logged on one time. Um, there's also different styles that you could have. There's different presets, blue bubbles, green, do sign, do white, individuals, black. So you could do choose a few different options here for the counters. And you place it anywhere you want, and that's all it is. That's all it takes. Um, document. This is so if you want to enter a Word or a Excel document, drag it over. Here it is. You could just paste the document in, or you could open the document. Yeah, that's honestly just open up whatever document you want to paste inside. So if you have a bunch of stuff written out, it'll be all right here, and you could display it. W3C logo is literally just that. It's a logo that you can push once you're in the internet. And banner page, this is so you could actually make a banner for the top or the bottom of the page. Um, once you place it, you know, you set the link to where the, that's where this banner comes in. You set the link to what the page where the banner comes from. So you create one of your other pages. They'll have a top space that's just everything created and decorated for a banner. And you select that one. We're going to go ahead and delete. And it didn't move back up. So we'll just go undo and undo. Ha ha. But that's actually the rest of the elements. Um, I'm going to show you these if I haven't shown them before and just discuss it real quick. These are elements. There's eight of them in total that you could download that come that is provided by Open Elements. They each have their different, um, you know, abilities and strengths. You know, you got a responsive social media bar that can sit the side of your page. You highlight it and it brings it out and says Google Plus. You know, you saw that's a neat one right there. This is actually one of the ones that. I'm going to be using on our my uh, shop's web page real soon. And see here you use it just like the internet. You have home, back. So this is Open Elements Store. Now these are all free to download. That's what's really cool. As they offer these, you know, a uh, background slide or the background image is always on the screen stretched 100% and moves up and down with the screen or the content looks like it just moves up and down in front of the screen. So that's a really cool feature right there as well. So if you have a limited size, you just have a large image for your background. That's what you could do. You know, so there's a few others. Once you download them, they just end up right here in the list on the side. But but that's actually the biggest thing about op uh, Open Element is the elements right here. This is what makes the whole web page. So by watching those tutorials, you should be able to create some really neat web pages. Um, now, if you have a building scripting, you could always hit create. You open a new one. Test. Test. I know I call everything test. Then you could add the behavior, uh, all the element info and everything, the icons, the properties. You write it in the script, all the different scripts that you use, shared scripts. It's got style zone, resources. And then you could upload it and share it to uh, Open Element. And if you wrote a good element, they'll post it up for free. You know, they'll post it up on their website, you know, just. Yeah, that's what's cool is you can actually post, you know, if you make something for your website, I always tell people that these are free and open source programs because the community helps out. You know, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this tutorial. I'm not extremely advanced, but I'm actually really not advanced. I've just been using this 
enough to know how to do the basics and if I could help at least one other person out with these I'll be happy so over the, ne in the next tutorial I'm going to go over the packs user space show you how to do logins and you know stuff like that for uh, for your web page be able to have people log in and create a whole list of that until then happy building